It's time for the Hockey Writers Grindline. A weekly show covering everything Detroit Red Wings. Brought to you by our own iconic top line of Wings writers. Sit back and enjoy the grind. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Grind Line here at the Hockey Writers. I am your host, Matthew Zator, and as always, joined in by my line mates, Devin Little and Evan Sabrin. Uh, guys, we're going up the roller coaster again. <laughs> Got a couple wins this uh, past week, and they're, they've built up a little bit of a cushion on that wild card spot that they've got right now. It's not big, but it's bigger than we were before. So uh, it's it's been a good week. Uh, Evan, how's it going? It's good, man. I was, I was about to make the Cedar Point joke uh, about this <laughs> season again, but I've made that joke so many times. I'm sure people are just getting <laughs> sick of it. It's kind of embarrassing. I can't come up with new material. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was uh, God another crazy ass week, man. I, I just I don't know. I don't know how to feel sometimes with this team, man. Like I said, it's <laughs> stressful. But it's good. It's bad. It's good. But this was uh, it's good to see them bounce back, and it's good to have the captain back with the team. Yeah, yeah, we're, we'll get to that. Uh, Devin, how's it going? Yeah, it's going good. Um, it's always fun to do this show. We're on the up part of the roller coaster than the down, yeah. <laughs> which is which is funny because when you're on a roller coaster, the down is actually the fun part, not the up. But anyways, true. yeah. Well, um, <laughs> It's Anyways, also the yeah, scary part too. So I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. There, there you go. That's that that is definitely the scary part of the Red Wing season is the down part. So <laughs> uh yeah, always fun to be here. Excited to talk hockey. Let's uh let's get to it. Let's go. All right. Well, let's uh get to our one good, one bad, and we're gonna have some good on this uh this week. And I will start um just to get this out of the way. Dylan Larkin back in the lineup. Uh, his first game was pretty good. He had a couple goals uh against uh a team that they are trying to pull ahead of and that is the New York Islanders. I, so captain's back and he's productive uh, in his first game back. And like we were talking before we started recording all the, everything just seems to fall back into place when he gets back in top line center back in everyone's in their right positions in the lines. And it just looks right. I, uh, and, and Larkin's a huge part of this team. I, he makes such a big difference. It's one guy, but he makes a huge difference in this lineup. And uh, he showcased it in his first game back. So he only played 16 minutes and uh, not a ton of ice time, but two goals in 16 minutes is pretty good. And two goals on three shots, also really good. So, uh, yeah, that's a really big good for this past week. Um, you know what? Bad. I don't really have a bad for this week. I mean, it's. It's two wins, and they have uh, now put themselves back into a a little bit more of a comfortable spot in that wild card race. It's not a huge margin. I mean, they got three points up on the Washington Capitals. I mean, it's better than a bit, and they have the they don't have games in hand. I mean, the Capitals have two games in hand too, so maybe that's a bad. <laughs> They've played with more games than uh, the team that's chasing them, so. Um, there's a bad for the week. All right, uh, Evan, I'll go to you. Uh, a good and a bad from this past week. Well, I'm going to go a little bit off the map here with my good. Uh, you know, I, I, I've got to give a shout out to the Red Wings marketing team. And guys, I, I apologize right now because I'm going to make a desperate and embarrassing plea to our listeners. And that is this. The Mo flow that they did last night, the, the, the Chia Pet that was the giveaway <laughs> last <laughs> night. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> And I think if you listen to this show, you know how much I love Moritz Sider. So if there's anyone out there that wants to part with this, I'll, I'll make it worth your while. I just can't pay those ridiculous, ridiculous eBay prices. I need this Moritz Sider cheetah pet. I have to have it. And I don't want to spend a crap load of money, but I will. So if anyone that one out there has one, that would be great. Uh, love it. Um and they've done great with these things all year with that, that little Fedorov hockey mini stick and whatever. So cheers to the Red Wings marketing team and their their promo giveaways. I This was too late. I probably would have tried to find a flight home to come home to get one of these things. So they're beautiful. Look at, look at that thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, my other good was, uh, you know, seeing Vladimir Konstantinov uh, up in the – up in the suites this week at the game, you know, he turned 57 on, I believe it was Tuesday, turned 57. Uh, you know, what a, what a Detroit icon he was, you know, growing up 
in Detroit in the nineties, I, I couldn't tell you how great it was to go to a Red Wings game and they would play. Uh, they made this this video, you know, called the Vladinator, you know, and it would they would cut in little scenes from Rocky saying, you know, whatever he hits, he destroys, and then they do a <laughs> montage of Konstantinov just crushing people. I mean, this guy, you know, we all thought Cromwell, you know, really hit people. Well, this guy, this guy crushed people. I mean, he killed people. It was he was amazing to watch. Amazing player. And one thing I I, I always thought was just kind of weird to hear, and I, I don't know if I like the context, but it's something I always found interesting, is when, uh, you know, after he got in that accident, the, uh, you know, they ended up suing the, the, the company or the owners of the, the limousine accident that he was in. And Ted Lindsay ended up testifying, and he made a he made a comment that I don't I don't know was great at the time, but he, he you know there's more important things in life, especially Vladdy's health. But he made the comment that the Red Wings probably would have won two to three more cups had, had Vladdy not gotten hurt. Mm. Now, while that wasn't something that was going through my mind, it just that was something that kind of raised my eyebrow. My bad is, uh, and I did want to tell a quick story that I talked to you guys about before the show is uh, that night, and uh, I, I I remember that night vividly. Uh, because it was it was a couple of weeks before, and I think it was a couple of weeks before. Now, uh, stay with me here because it was thirty years ago, so my memory is not what it used to be. But we, I remember we met Vladimir at a uh, at a charity softball event in Canton, Michigan. That's where I grew up, and it was him and Darren McCarty, and he looked so cool. He had those those glasses, the Vladinator, you know, whatever I hit, I destroy. <laughs> and it was so cool meeting him and gotten his autograph. And I, and I remember that night. You know, I, I was home alone a lot that summer. And so, the, you know, the when the Red Wings were in the playoffs, it was keg party at my house. So I <laughs> when it came on air in the news that uh, one of the Red Wings was hurt, uh, you know, in a serious limousine accident, I immediately called the, the hospital and told them they, didn't, they wouldn't release who the player's uh, name was. And I immediately called the hospital terrified. And obviously we'd been having fun that night. And um I called the hospital terrified saying, Oh my God, who is it? Who is it? I'm a member of the team. I need to know. I need to know. And obviously they didn't tell me cause I was drunk and being stupid, but uh, it, it was a really, it was a really big buzz kill at that time after the Red Wings had just won the Stanley cup for the first time in, you know, 50 plus years and to watch one of the game's greats. And he was one of the game's greats. Uh, if people say that they don't know what they're talking about, if they say otherwise, he uh, it, it was a really it was a really strange feeling in time. Uh, it was amazing to see the second year when the Wings went back to back and having Vladdy in the stands and the the Believe Stone and and, and what the team went through with that. But uh, it's always good to see him. It's always good to see that you know he's still with us and he's still he's still fighting because he's had a really tough life. And uh, shout out to the Vladinator man because he was uh, he was one of my favorites growing up. Yeah, it's a good story. Um, you know, I it it was unfortunate. I mean, anything like that's unfortunate for uh, anyone, not just a hockey player. But right, you know, it, it his career was cut short. I uh, and I loved. I, I remember that the scene where that he was brought out in wheelchair when they won. I uh, and you know that that's such a thing that that sticks with me still uh, when that happened. And um, you know uh, that that was a great great scene too. So. Yeah, definitely, definitely a big, uh, big part of the Red Wings uh, history. And uh, just as a off the rush, it's going to be very historic. Uh, just, just, uh, just as a uh, future. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think, I don't think Detroit will ever let anybody wear 16 again. No, I don't think no that one. that number will ever be worn in Detroit history. He was one of the, he was one of the best. For sure. All right, Devin, over to you. A good and a bad from this past week. You know, it's interesting, just real quick, uh, that I feel like the Red Wings have this weird thing where, like, there are numbers that are retired. They're just not officially retired, because I do agree no one's wearing 16 ever again, but it's not in the rafters yet. Mm -hmm. um, interesting stuff. Uh, my uh, So my one bad is honestly just going to be the whiplash that this team gives everybody <laughs> that follows <Yeah>. it. Um <laughs> You know, I've, at the last two shows we've had, we were, you know, talking about how this team's not good enough, and um, it's gonna be, it's gonna, it's gonna be time to start, you know, watching the draft class and figure out what what that's gonna look like, and this and that, and now here we are, Darren Larkin's back, and they're going back up on the roller coaster, and and uh, things are sunshine and daisies again, right? Um, 
That's like the mic. That's if I can explain what this season has been like, just watch every show we've put out in March. Like <laughs> yes. That's, that's what, uh, that's what their season's been like. Um, my one good, uh, since we're uh, talking about promotional materials that the, uh, <laughs> Um, Red Wings team has put out. I'm going to show my my uh, Lucas Raymond bobblehead here um, and ask Matt, when's the last time I uh, I conducted a hype train? It's been a minute, right? In a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's well past due. I uh, well past time. I do this. Uh, Lucas Raymond is a <laughs> boss. Um, <laughs> uh, he's kind of just continuing to do what he did last week. Uh, this uh this week against the Blue Jackets, uh, he and Patrick Kane rose to the moment. Um, they don't win that game if those two players aren't on their team. Um, and even before Larkin join, rejoined the lineup, uh, there's a, a very, very strong argument to be made that um, Raymond's the reason why um, they were in any game that they were in while Larkin was out. He was mm-hmm. the one giving the most effort. He's He's he hasn't just taken steps this season. He's taken strides. He's made strides, um, and that's what you want to say of a player that was drafted as high as he was, and that I've been you know tooting his horn for years at this point. Uh, super excited for Raymond. Super excited for what he is and what he's going to become because he's still just scratching the surface. Oh, and another bad here too is that they re- they should have signed him before this season and extended. Yeah. 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 Numbers yeah. Or he's he's on one of those uh, going up roller coasters that never goes down, right? Oh <laughs> yeah, and it's scary. It's almost scary to think like, what if he had, what if he had been hurt? Where would this team oh. be? I mean, he has put this team on his back, and Absolutely. at twenty two years old, on point for a seventy point uh, season. Said this a thousand times, man. It's it's going to be time to pay up. Yeah, he's he's going to be getting a big contract here, and I. Uh, I hope it's long and very long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that eight years. That would be that would be good. I had to get him locked up. Uh my other one bad is that they can't give him more than eight years. That's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and no more 10 year contracts anymore. So can't do that yet anymore. <laughs> yeah, they're not gonna have that ever again. All right. Uh let's move into, you know, We've talked about James Reimer a lot on this show, uh, usually in the bad. Um, this time it's good because he's been in the in the net for the last three wins for the Red Wings. And, you know, we're starting to think about the playoffs. Yes, they are that's still far away because they are not solidified in that. But, you know, if the playoffs did start tomorrow, who would you start? I mean, game one right now that this would be against the Boston Bruins to start. So let's go in that context. I, they play the Boston Bruins first round. I'll start with you, Devin. Uh, who do you start against the Bruins in game one, James Reimer or Alex Lyon? Uh, now here's where I get to be a Debbie downer for the, uh, for the episode. Um, if, if there's one reason why, like, it's almost a bummer <laughs> that, like, you know, they're, you know, I, I don't want to say it's a bummer. I'm going to rephrase this. Uh, if there's one thing to kind of like uh, about them, like in their playoff chances, it's that when they get there, they still have to like, they, they their goalies are the only ones they have, right? Like they can't like go acquire another goalie. Yeah. They, they, they can't do that. Um, they can't sign another goalie. They're, they're, they're locked into what they have. Right. Um, and the reason why I say that is because uh, despite his three wins, Reimer still ha- like he's good for one bad goal a game. Like and that one bad goal in the playoffs could be the one that kills you. Right um, now, after he lets in that one bad goal, he typically plays slightly above average. So, like, you know, that's that's one of the reasons why he's been able to get the wins lately. But I don't feel good about a goalie that's good for one bad goal a game. Right. That's you'd rather have a goalie who doesn't do that. But then your other option, at least right now, is Alex Lyon, who is very clearly burnt out, um, was not able to handle the uh, the majority of the starts like we were talking about a few weeks ago. Um, and the dude just needs rest. Um, I, I think in a perfect world, you ride Reimer for the rest of the season um, and get in and then Lyon's fresh. So that way, if you need to turn to him, he's not like he's not dead in the water. Right. Um I think, unfortunately, the Red Wings probably have to stick with their strategy of just riding the hot hand in that, even into the playoffs. 
Um, typically playoff teams find their guy and they just ride him until, um, you know, things go horribly wrong. Basically, basically I think the Red Wings are kind of in a position where they, they have to lean into their, uh, their three headed monster. Um, and that's including Huso, assuming he gets back in time, but, um, depending on when he gets back, he might not even be like a smart idea to throw in the playoffs because that's a high pressure situation for somebody who hasn't played meaningful games in a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think they're more or less stuck with Reimer and Lyon, and I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest with you guys. I, you know, I'm all aboard the playoff push right now, but um, when the time comes that they do, if if they do uh, make the playoffs, I think that's like the one area you point to and go, this is why they're not going to win. Mm-hmm. They they don't have they don't have a set situation and goal, and you don't really know what you're what you're going to get in one night to the next. So this is, I mean. <laughs> They're they're not guaranteed to play the Boston Bruins, but Reimer is nine thirteen and three, the nine twenty five save percentage and two point five nine goals against average against the Bruins in his career. So take that. It's not bad. Well, that's not bad. Um, Alex Lyon played against the Bruins in the playoffs last yeah. season. Yeah, uh, then he was pulled uh, for Bobrovsky, and that's when they came back when he left so i don't know <laughs> it's maybe he'd want a chance to redeem himself uh from that yeah. evan what do you think about this uh who would you start in game one in the in the playoffs uh, at this point it would be the bruins i'm thinking lalan newsy goes with like the, a new bold strategy and just throws out six skaters instead <laughs> just, just play a man down and that's honestly that's probably the first thought i had in my head when and reimer let in that goal uh the other night from the blue line right between his legs <laughs> come on man you know that reminded me of the old days and that, that used to happen in the playoffs once in a while for the red wings but uh you know it's if anything we've learned this season it, it really tells me that they're gonna they're gonna get a goaltender in this this offseason and and mm-hmm. I think the, uh, the two names you keep hearing are Gibson and Markstrom, so I'm really interested to see that. But if I had to go into the playoffs with it right now, you got to go with the hot hand. I mean, that's mm-hmm. goalies are such a fickle thing in the mm-hmm. NHL. You know, it's I mean, we left Reimer for dead. What? Well, pretty much most of the season. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you know he's 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 made some big saves for us right now. You, you got to ride the hot hand. That's what that's that NHL goaltending is is riding mm-hmm. that hot hand. So. I, I, I'd start out with Reimer, but again, I mean, I'm not ready to even talk playoffs yet, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> it's I, I got a bad feeling this is going to come down to the wire with what we've seen out of this team this year. And and if I'm if I'm newsy, I, I got I'm I'm letting Larkin, I'm putting him in bubble wrap every night before I go home. <laughs> Absolutely, to make sure we don't have this stuff happen again. And Raymond should like not be like he should be left in the building and stored in an ice freezer for superheroes or something. Like that. <laughs> He's literally <laughs> our our savior. Uh, but no, I, I, I I'd ride the hot hand right now, and obviously Reimer has it. Uh, Lion's going to get the start. It looks like uh, tomorrow. Is that right? I saw. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, hopefully we see a bounce back performance from him. Uh, but again, the, the, the soft goals worry me with Reimer that that one the other night really just said, oh, and, uh, you know, he, he we got bailed out too. there's that play in the first period where, uh, you know, cop who thankfully redeemed himself, <laughs> uh, you know, he left Bo Horvat wide open in the crease. And Horvat missed a wide open net. And that kind of scared me because that could have changed the momentum of the game at that point. Um, right now, you know, I think, <sighs> I, I think they're, they're going to go after a big goalie, like I said, but yeah, again, yeah. Ride the hot hand and see where it gets us. Cause mm-hmm. right now no one's playing consistent enough to, you know, to be that number one that would make you say that this is my bona fide guy mm-hmm. going. So we'll see what, what happens in the next couple weeks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's still quite a few games remaining. Uh, there are 12, I believe, uh, Yes. Last time we talked playoffs, guys, they went on a nine-game losing streak. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> they played seventy forward. games. There are twelve games. <laughs> twelve, so they have 12 yeah. games. Left. We got they got a tough schedule down the stretch. You know, there's there, there's no easy games here. Yeah. There isn't. There's a lot of tough teams. Uh, Nashville's we're... riding a sixteen point sixteen point streak right now. Mm-hmm. Sixteen game mm-hmm. point streak. So yeah. they got they got to come to play tomorrow. Yeah, it's gonna be tough. All right, uh, let's get to our first off the rush. And uh, like I said, it's going to be a little bit historic. I've I've been writing a few history things for the sub for my the hockey history sub stack. So uh, it's in my head. So it's one of those I, quiz shows again, is it? 
<laughs> He's not gonna be a shot. Oh boy. I all right. I I never realized. Now I'm probably gonna get flamed in the comments, but I did not realize that Paul Coffey played for the Red Wings. I even for like, he did play quite a few seasons for them too. Huh? I so you can flame me if you want. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. All right. Well, it's not about man. that, but it, it got me thinking about <laughs> this. So, Devin, if you could bring back any Red Wings goalie from the past and Ooh. insert them in the lineup, who would you pick that would give you the best chance right now? I mean, my mind immediately goes to Dominic Hasek. Um, just the pedigree and, you know, the fact he did win two cups with the Red Wings. Um you know, and even just outside of Red Wings, he's one of the best goalies to ever play, right? Um, but I'm honestly gonna go with Chris Osgood. Um, because you know, Hoshik won he won two cups, but Ozzy, you know, <laughs> yeah, right. he won two as the starter. <laughs> and that includes one where Hoshik was the back the backup. Um Ozzy's uh one of those, you know, I think if you ask most Red Wings fans, they'll say he should he should be in the Hall of Fame. Um I'm of the opinion he should be as well, but mm. um, I get why he's not. Um, yeah, I mean, Ozzy was always clutch uh, in in big uh, big moments for the Red Wings. Um, he uh, basically rescued the Red Wings' 2008 playoff run, ultimately led to them to winning the Stanley Cup. So for me, it's got to be Ozzy. All right. Evan, what about you? Well, you obviously stole my answer. So you can tell <laughs> my reaction. And I've the whole time I was looking for that shirtless Ozzy picture up in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the guy Devin wants. To, uh, uh, I mean, dude, there, there's the Red Wings have, uh, have had so many good goaltenders over the years, but not you know recently. I, I can't think. God, probably the past 10, 15 years, they haven't had really anybody that's like been like a superstar standout. Uh, I mean, if we can go far back, I'll you know we can go Terry Sawchuk and before yeah, they there won. you go. Yeah, right. I mean, that guy had to be literally insane. I think he was when you know when those guys didn't. Wear, <laughs> can you believe that? <laughs> and you see that guy's face towards the end of his career. I mean, it was just all, oh. it looked like a leather, just all <laughs> yeah. stuff. Um, my favorite goal, I, I, I did love Osgood. I liked Osgood so much. The uh, emotion he showed when the Red Wings uh, lost in 94 and they got him crying at the lo- in the locker room. And he was a young kid. They mm-hmm. brought him up, Osgood, uh, real early, real early. Mm-hmm. He, I believe he was like 20 or 20, 21, 22 mm-hmm. when he first started on the playoffs for the Red Wings. But, um, you know, I, I I love both of Devin's answers. Hasek was great. I wish we had Hasek in his prime because we kind of got yeah. him towards the end of his career. And, you know, Hasek wasn't uh, – he he was older and, you know, he played in front of one of the, the best teams in the, in the history of the game. That 2002 Red Wings team was uh, something else. Yeah, but, yeah, I'd uh, Hasek or Osgood sounds good to me, so I'm just going to piggyback off Devin. <laughs> All right. Well, that that's the Osgood was my first uh, thought as well. I very underrated goaltender. I, you know, he wasn't Absolutely. a star, but he just he made the saves when they needed it. And that's what you need <laughs> in the playoffs in the regular season. It doesn't matter. Like, I'll give an honorable mention. Star. Oh, sorry. I, I got, I'll give an honorable mention to Mike Vernon too, Hall of Famer. Good call. He was, Good call. Uh, you know, he was a battler. He was a feisty little. He, he wasn't that big or whatever. And, but he, you know, he won two cups, one with Calgary. And uh, one with the wings, so he was uh, he was fun too. Yeah, that's a good that's a good one too. All right, well, before we move on to the next half of the show, we're gonna talk a little bit about leadership. And uh, but until we do that, let's talk about our Substack here at the Hockey Writers. I uh, mentioned that I have the Hockey History Substack. We also have the Red Wings Substack. I uh, that gives you a ton of stuff. Uh, three times a week, you get get the best articles from the HockeyWriters.com. We also have the premium tier with Game day previews, exclusive articles, prospect reports. A new column, I believe, is is also as un, Red Wings unfiltered as uh, has come out as well. Um, lots of great stuff over at the Substack. So take a look in the link below to get more. All right, like I said we're going to talk about a bit of leadership here and uh, looking at the off season and. Well, maybe not. I mean, these guys probably are going to be here next season. But uh, let's pretend that uh, David Perron, Andrew Kopp, and Ben Sherratt were not coming back next season. Who would you want the alternate captains to be? I mean, 
all these guys, they're obviously leaders. I, but there is a new generation coming up as well that are probably going to be that as too. So I'll start with you, Evan, on this. Uh, who would you nominate as alternate captains right now and eliminating those three? Well, I think you got to go with everybody loves Raymond right now. I mean, him and Sider, those are the two that, that those are the right now, those are the cornerstones for this rebuild and this franchise moving forward. You know, hopefully they sign them to eight year deals like we just discussed. I'd, I prefer a 16 year deal for both of them, but <laughs> it's, it's, not the way the, <laughs> it's not the way the league works. Uh, and, you know, it again, like I, I we're still waiting on this Patrick Kane signing and, I, and I'm still curious yep. to see. You know where, what his management team, what his thoughts are, because you know when we saw that Emily Kaplan report, and I know we discussed this last week, we saw the the Kaplan report saying that they were close to an extensions with him and Perron. You know, Kane wore the A in Chicago. He's a you know, it's it, we've speculated and some have hinted at the fact that he may be the one who's been you know mentoring Raymond. To the mm. you know, it's helped him lift his game. So I'm really interested to see, hopefully he gets resigned soon. That's partly, that's probably one of the main reasons I'm really want to see the Red Wings make the playoffs. Cause I just, we want to keep Kane happy. I mean, I, I couldn't imagine where this team would be right now without Kane or Raymond. When, when you think yeah. about it, I mean, the clutch goals that Kane has come up with, we don't, I, I we, it's, it's hard to tell how much time we've got left with this guy, uh, yeah. which scares the crap out of me because Showtime has been just amazing for everyone in Detroit. It's really been awesome this season. So I think those are the three that I would go with. I, I think it would probably start with Kane, uh, but you, you can't write off Lucas Raymond or Moritz Sider, what they mean to this team, because they, that's the future. And it's, it's not hard to, it's not hard for any fan to, to see that these guys are, this is it. These are our guys. And, you know, I, I think Raymond's going to at 22 years old and 70 points, like we said, it's, it's this kid's becoming, you know, we're not ready to say elite yet, but he's becoming a star. And at 22 mm -hmm. years old, it, I mean, you can only go up from here. So those are the guys I, I'd want representing the Red Wheel as, in an alternate role. Yeah, for sure. Devin, what about you? Uh, who would you nominate as alternate captains taking away Perron, Cop, and Sherratt? Well, I'm somebody who believes that um, there should be an alternate that represents uh, both sides of the puck. So I like to have an alternate on the forward group and an alternate in the defense group. Um, and when I look at the defense group right now, if you're removing Sherratt out of uh, consideration, the only person that even makes sense in my mind is Moritz Sider. Um, he's, he's their number one guy. He takes on the hardest things. He's, he's an ultra competitive guy. He's one of those guys who talks in the later in the locker room about how they need to put their game up when they're not performing well and whatnot. I think he's, one of those guys that uh, is trying to be a standard bearer for the team. And um, that's what you look for in an alternate captain. Um, I also agree with Evan Lucas. I mean, like I said, with when I was highlighting him in my one good, Lucas Raymond is uh, kind of will it was willing this team to uh, have a chance without Larkin in the lineup um, on a team that's filled with uh, veterans guys that were brought in for veteran leadership. The 22 year old was the one who was really leading the way. And mm -hmm. I think that speaks volumes to what, um, kind of player Lucas Raymond is. Um, I think he's he's not only becoming uh, a better player in terms of his skill and what he can do with the puck, but also just how he carries himself and what um, what kind of he what what uh, what energy he brings to the team. I think he is starting to become a leader um, in that sense. Uh, I do like the Kane call out. I think that he's kind of a natural one to uh, lean into um, because he does have history. He's very well respected, not just amongst the team, but league wide. Um, but one other name I will throw out too is going to be Christian Fisher. Actually, mm. um, he uh, he's another one of those guys that I think is kind of flying under the radar in terms of um, you know making sure this team's competing and giving a giving their best effort without Larkin. And um, he had that moment uh, with Trevor Thompson uh, in the uh, <laughs> um, I think it was after the game uh, where he was talking about where they're talking about Larkin being back and he. He dropped the f bomb because he was just so uh, <laughs> so happy to have Larkin back, and uh, I think he was speaking for the whole team with there. And then he had, and then he of course he apologized to his mom afterwards. <laughs> um, I I just think that he's. I remember talking to Pat, our old pal Pat Pat, uh, Pat Brown, about uh, what Christian Fisher would bring to this team, and Pat said that uh, he's he's one of the most likable guys, not just in the locker room, but uh, for the fans mm -hmm. as well. He's just he uh, he 
brings his lunchbox and goes to work every day. And he uh, puts it all, leaves it all out in the ice. And he, uh, he's adored in the locker room. He, he Pat said that uh, his Coyotes teammates would miss him. And I think I see why he said that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I see Fisher as a good, uh, honestly, like a replacement for top. If we're going off of our, our uh, the three alternates that do exist. Um, I think that Fisher would be a good replacement for cop mm-hmm. in that sense, because he's a bottom six guy that brings energy and um, is maybe a tone setter in the locker room. So you got to, you know, you got to, the the young guys immediately come to mind in this topic. But I do think that they do have some other uh, guys with experience that could fill that role yeah. if need be. For sure. I, yeah. I mean, pick- don't, what was that? Go ahead. Uh, I just want to piggyback off what he's saying is, it, you know, we can't state enough how much Fisher's helped uh, with this, you know, mini turnaround or what we're calling it. You know, he's he's been playing lights out. And between him and Raymond, I I, I can't see players out there that have given more effort than those two have. Mm-hmm. He's been fighting, battling that that goal he scored from his knees uh, was just it was really yep. amazing. He's mm-hmm. fighting out there and, and we need that. We need that energy. Yeah, I, I was going to say that uh, one thing, though, like Perron may not be back next season, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. cop on that bigger deal. So he, he will sure same thing, but you know, in the future, these guys aren't going to be here. And you know, this hypothetical right now, uh, could actually be reality, uh, in the future. So, uh, yeah, it was a good, nice, nice topic. It was a, it was a good, uh, good discussion for the future. May, may I also just throw out real quick, but I think this topic is going to be one to throw again down the line because I actually think there's a lot of guys in the Red Wings system that are natural leaders. Mm. Um, I think of Nate Danielson being an 18 year old captain with the Brandon Wheat Kings last year. Um, he's uh, with the um, uh, the Portland Winterhawks now. Mm. He's not a the captain anymore, but I think he still wears a letter with them. So he's you know he's he's already recognized as a young leader. I've always thought Casper kind of fit that mold as well. So um, they have a lot of guys that will be like leaders in the room, but they won't wear letters, won't, won't mm-hmm. wear letters. And, uh, you know, you know me, Matt, I love, love my guys that are, uh, that are leaders like that. And I think the Red Wings are going to benefit from having those type of character guys, For sure. um, as they continue to build. Yeah, it definitely, those guys, uh, in the locker room, and there's so many guys that don't wear letters that are, are leaders, um, character guys that, you just need those guys uh, in the dressing room, especially when things get tough uh, in the playoffs and everyone's scrambling around for someone to, to lead the way and you need those guys. So uh, we'll see how, how much more of that happens for the rest of the season. All right. Since we've talked about Lucas Raymond, I, I'm going to ask this. We'll have two off the rush questions. I just got this one. This is a quick one. So Raymond's on a six game point streak. I uh, unfortunately didn't continue his goal streak in this last game, uh, but he's still on the point streak. He had an assist. So he's at 24 goal, 20, I'd say, is it 24? I just looked at it <laughs> and then I forgot it. Uh, he's got 24, yeah, 24 goals right now and 12 games left. Evan, does he hit 30? Pretty goals, cool. 12 games left. God, if he, if he keeps six. playing the way he keeps <laughs> playing the way he is, man, he, he, he might hit 40 now. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think it's going to be close. I can see it like 28, 29, 30, but I, I'm yeah. not even I'm not even interested in, in his numbers as far as hitting that mark. I don't know if that's better for the contract or whatever, but he, uh, <laughs> uh, his play, it, it, it's it, I, I, even outside of the goals, he's bringing so much more to this team. Uh, as far as his is, you know, did you have you seen his just his energy? You know, when he scores, he is fired up and he loves the crowd. Oh, he is. You know, he's. I, I think Kane's. You know, trying to rub off a little mini Showtime on him, <laughs> and you know, it's he's electric, and it's I'm I'm loving it. You know, it's it's so great to watch, especially have these young kids. You know, we've talked. I think the biggest thing about Raymond is we've talked so long about the Red Wings not having that, you know, that elite talent, that that star player. But I, I feel like we are watching him become a star, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And again, it's beating a dead horse. We could change this show to the Lucas Raymond show. <laughs> he, you know, 22 years old, man. He's he's, he's great. Yeah. And again, it's going to be back up the Brinks <laughs> truck, man. I'll, I guarantee I'll hear it out here from L.A. because they're. Eisenman's going to have to pay a pretty penny I'm sure this guy's in the wing wheel for the next eight years. Yeah. I, so before I go to Devin, he turns 22 on March 28th. 
I played the Hurricanes on that day, and they've got Predators, Capitals. Okay, uh, damn it, did he hit 30 goals? I'm not going to say, does he hit 30 goals for his birthday? <laughs> Ooh, there you go. Uh, happy early Way birthday to Lucas Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> He's on a heater, uh, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I no, two I... in each of the games. <laughs> you could do it. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I, I, I can see it just like Evan 28, 29, 30, like right in there. Um, it's gonna be tough. Uh, I, I think, I think ultimately it's, it's just a really uh, awesome thing that he has a new career high in goals already, a new career high in points, and there's still 12 games to play. Um, I don't, I think he's going to fall just short of 30 goals. I, I honestly think he might finish at 29. Um, <laughs> But darn, do I think that uh, we can start getting really excited about what his point totals could look like next season. Yeah, I'm internal optimist. I'm going to say he hits 30 goals. That you Not are. saying he's hitting 30 <laughs> goals on his birthday or on his birthday, but I, I think he hits 30. Six goals in 12 games, doable. So Absolutely. I, there's you know, all three of us are jinxing tonight, this but... team right now. They're just going to go on a seven-game losing streak after this. We're so jinxing this. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> all right. <laughs> let's we might talk have to about... go on a hiatus. <laughs> Way too happy. Yeah. Well, let's talk about another good thing. Uh, Simon Edmondson, I, he's played the last two games. Um, no points, but he looked really good against the Islanders, played 19 minutes and 40 seconds. 1836 in his previous game, both wins. Just saying, I uh, he is in the lineup. <laughs> the so, I uh, Devin, what do you think about Simon Evanson's play in his last couple games, and does he play more of a regular role now? What uh, what what are you just saying there, Matt? What are you what are you suggesting? <laughs> he stays in the lineup. <laughs> yeah, we've never talked sure. about this all year, so I don't. This is yeah, no, this is the first time we've mentioned it. Simon this, yeah, that's thing. a whole new topic for us. <laughs> um, I I'm very much on a team. He stays in Detroit until their season's over, and then he comes back to Grand Rapids to lead them on a to lead the Griffins on a long playoff run. Um, there you go. I you know I I think uh. You know, it's only two games, right? We don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but um, he looks like the player that we've been shouting all year to get him in the lineup, and this is why, right? He yeah. he looks, he's an NHL player, point, you know, plain and simple. Um, yeah. We've known that at the AHL level. I've watched him a few times, uh, just going going to games. He looked leagues above pretty much everybody else he played against, and now he's playing in the NHL, and he looks like he belongs. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I like I said, I I think he finishes finishes out the year in Detroit and then returns when it's time. Um, but yeah, I, I I think he's earned this opportunity. I think he's gonna make do everything he can to make the most of it. I think the Red Wings blue line is better with him on it. Mm -hmm. Evan, I know yeah, you mentioned Evanson before we started recording, so I know you have stuff to say about him. And <laughs> what what do you think about Edmondson's last couple games and just stay in the lineup? Oh man, it's you know it it's been great watching him play. His length gives us so so much to this team, and I, I know I highlighted that play he made last night in Larkin's third goal, where he held that puck in in the offensive zone, which which led to that goal. He also made a play earlier that uh, or I'm sorry later in the game, which which led to another goal in the rush where Rasmussen set up cop, well somewhat set up cop. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen he get an assist for it, but you. You could very much argue that he deserved one. Uh, you know, he's he, he, the thing I love about him, too. And the thing I've been harping on for uh, a lot, not just on this show, but in general, in my writings, is that the Red Wings have struggled with, the, you know, their zone exits. You know, they have they've been really messy and clean, uh, not clean. And, you know, Petrie was uh, I can't go down that Petrie road right now. <laughs> but um, no, he, he looked great. Uh, you know, he looked confident bringing the puck up the ice. He made quick, clean passes, get the outlet out of the zone. I, I love seeing it. You know, I, I can't help but wonder, you know, uh, us, I mean, how many shows or how many times did we have a show where I was crying like a, you know, crying for this guy to be up, begging for him to be up. Uh, we, all, all of us were, you know, I, I think most Detroit fans were. And uh, hopefully we're seeing that, you know, the fruits of that labor now because he, he, ha he has been effective, you know, and, and he playing on the second line there. 
with Petrie almost helps cover up some mistakes too, which I feel is great because I'm not a Petrie fan. Uh, but uh, no, I, 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 I love it. I, I hope he's here to stay for a bit. Again, I'm wondering like, you know, do they, will they burn a year off his ELC if he plays more, you know, towards the end of the 12 games left? Is that something you got to figure in it, especially when you consider, you know, these contracts that are coming out, you know, I, I think, I think he's got to, you, you got to leave him in this lineup because he, he just brings another dimension with his size and his stick. And he's looked pretty good to me. He, he's not shying away from the physical game. He's something, you know, he's, again, he's, he's also uh, a, a major cornerstone of this team. Mm -hmm. He's someone that, you know, gives you Victor Hedman vibes. So I, yeah. I want to see this kid here forever. I never want to see him go down again. An interesting note, he is wearing Paul Coffey's number, 77. <laughs> oh, I believe Paul Coffey was the last Red Wing to wear that number, but maybe some one of our readers will call me out and tell me I'm wrong because <laughs> I'm an idiot. But, um, yeah, no, it, it's great. It, it, it's great. I, I think it was past due, and uh, it's. I just want to keep it going, man. Keep it going with Evanson. Love him. I well, you all know how I uh, like Edmondson, so I don't have to say much more. Uh, he he is just like I say, he should have been in the NHL from the start of the season. Well, I mean, obviously he was hurt, and that's was unavoidable. But you know, he's just he looks NHL ready, and he he should just be in the lineup for just because he looks like you said. He's both said he makes the Red Wings better, and. Wouldn't you want your best uh, chance in the lineup to make your defense core the best it can be? I don't know. I, He's I'm played not... over 100 games in the AHL. He's more than ready. Yeah. It, it's time. And, you know, I, I just do his. He's, you know, it's it's time. <laughs> it's it's more to time. Say. That's just. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I, it's, I'm trying to find the numbers. It's I, to see if there were, if anyone else is. 77 but my website's not working for me right now um but yeah it's a we'll see what happens in the next next bunch of games i mean it's uh they've got some tough opponents to come up but they got like we mentioned the predators they got the capitals which is gonna be a big game on tuesday uh because they're the ones that are chasing them if they can win that they pull ahead even more from that <laughs> that team uh, you got the Hurricanes, the Panthers, Lightning again. You got the Rangers. I mean, there's, there's no easy games here. I mean, the Canadians are the last two games of the season. Um, probably the easiest opponents I'm looking at here. Yeah. I'm going to, uh, we've learned right, not right. to say that after the Arizona debacle. That's not even that easy. They're, they're, plucky. yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna jump in real quick. I know that we're like gonna get derailed real quick, but I I, I know this answer, and I just need to like throw this at you yes. guys. So two players have worn number seventy seven between Paul Coffey and Simon Edvinson. Okay, all right. Any guesses? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. oh. Are, they're not uh, like. Were they some of them? Is, one of them is super obscure. Like I'd be very shocked if you got them. Oh. There's no way I'm getting it. There's just no way. But super obscure one is Dan Renuff in 2017. Oh, yeah. oh no way. I and then there's know. one more, and I will give you guys a hint. He's a former first round pick. Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know that one. It's not, not Evgen Evgen Evgeny, no. Evgeny Svechnikov. Oh, Svechnikov. Oh, oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I gotta I gotta pull the juice top for my kid here right here real quick. Sorry. <laughs> you, you got to edit that part up. Okay, I'll be but, right back. Uh, Daddy's but, talking uh, red wings. <laughs> but uh yeah, Paul Coffey. That's right, Savetchnikov. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but they were both see, uh, they weren't defensemen though, so correct. Really. None of them really played like real minutes. You know, for no, the no, but yeah, yeah I, I, I should have known that Dan Renuff, <laughs> <laughs> but he's the full for defenseman since coffee. So we're good there. <laughs> nah, I'm still an idiot. All right. Well, let's see. We'll see how uh, the rest of the season goes. Uh, like I say, lots of tough teams. Um, it's going to be interesting. We'll see if we're on the up on the roller coaster or the down when we get uh, back 
<laughs> our next episode because before that they will play let's see they will play the predators the capitals and the hurricanes before our next episode so quickly before we end let's predict a record here how many wins for the red wings in this three game the start of a road trip here god we're jinxing them <laughs> oh, god. let's start with you Devin. um they're all well, two of them are playoff teams right now. I'm going to say they win two out of three. I'm not going to say which say one who? they win, though. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'll say it. They're going to win one out of three. They're going to beat Nashville tomorrow. There you go. Never, never play the Rangers well. And Carolina is stacked right now. So. Capitals. Oh, Capitals, Capitals. Do? Okay. Yeah. Rangers Capitals. are late. Okay, Capitals. Which, we'll take we'll take them down. And man, am I glad to see Tom Wilson get that six game suspension. Yeah. Today. Oh, yeah. Because God, if he did that to Raymond, then I really would fly home to Detroit. And I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I'd do anything about it, but <laughs> I'd <definitely> be angry. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. I did it. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Devin, Evan, for uh coming on the show again. Uh it's Always great talking Red Wings, especially when they've won a couple games. And uh, I'll let Evan finish the show here. <laughs> I'm begging you, people. I need this mofo. <laughs> this is the greatest Chia pet of all time. And as a young boy, I had Chia pets, a lot of them. I don't tell people that, but I do. <laughs> I need this. I need you. Somebody to step up. I'll make it worth your while. Thank you. <laughs> Leave a note in the comments. That's all. All right, well, we'll see you next time on another episode of The Grind Line.